I am gonna to talk to you a little bit about video uh, hap off. That was kind of the setup for the conversation and I have real facts about that. Now, I need to kind of have a sense of the room here. How many of you are marketers or agencies? Just a show of hands, okay. And how many of you sit in the sell side? Oh wow, okay, so at least half of you are gonna hate me. Because I am gonna tell you what I believe is the single greatest opportunity, verifiable, measured in media today, and it is mobile video, right? That's obviously where I'm going. And I have real data and real facts, and I will set up how to do that. Those of you who aren't familiar with the MMA, just you know, we're a nonprofit trade association, not too dissimilar than the IEB, which I used to run some time ago, uh, but except that we actually represent marketers, which means I have to stand on the stage and tell the absolute truth all the time. It is, because I'm not an advocacy just here for mobile. I'm not just selling you mobile. I don't care if you do mobile. I care if you do mobile well. That's what matters to me. Now that certainly benefits the rest of my membership, like Google and Facebook and Weather and ESPN and a number of other companies, some of you in the room, some of you on the slide. But ultimately, it's about really making sure that marketers succeed with a channel which I think is a very strong play to do. Now, I'm gonna sort of alternate back and forth here. I'm gonna talk about mobile a little bit because I gotta put some of this in context, but I am gonna get decidedly right to mobile video and share with you insights around that. I've pulled out a special excerpt of our data and I will give information to marketers that the sellers won't like. But I will also tell the sellers why the marketers aren't paying enough. And this will, because I have done this before, it will reset the marketplace. It does. That's what information like this does, and the way that a trade group like the MMA works, it will move the market. So there's a window here, but it's going to evaporate. At the very end also, I have an offer for you interested enough, so we'll share that. So here, first off, mobile advertising, we proved it, right? Undeniably, I spent $2 million over the last three years to figure out how to do that. How many think they can measure mobile within their marketing mix today and compare it to TV, radio, magazines, other channels? Exactly, nobody. Isn't that fucking shocking? <laughs> really? That's insane. That's insane. Let me ask you a question. How many of you believe that this is a top three agenda for your company? And you can't measure it? What the hell is going on with Nielsen and everybody else? So what happened is that I realized that, that you didn't as a marketer, and by the way, I've talked to 50 CMOs in the last year and sharing some insights around this research, and they've all said the same thing. Nobody can measure mobile in a marketing mix, and that is a huge problem for what I think is the single greatest change in our behavior that we ever experience. It's unbelievable what's going on with mobile as it pertains to our individual, and we can't measure it. So, I spent the money, I did the research, built the methodology with Market Evolution and uh, Inside Express, now at Miller Brown, and we thanked them immensely. It was not easy, it was one of the more painful things I've ever had to do. I had a board who was looking at me with very close scrutiny. I'm lucky I'm still here. It was that close at some times. But we have proven that mobile advertising is highly effective and that brands, as a result, are missing an opportunity because that's what happens when market moves, when a markets move, and you can zig or zag with them in a way that's powerful for your business, you create competitive advantage, right? It was Jack Welsh who said famously that there's only two ways to create competitive advantage. Just two. You need to have insights into your consumers faster than your competition, right? Mobile is an insight. Your consumer's relationship to mobile is an insight. But equally important, his number two point was, you have to act on it. Because if you don't act, it doesn't matter. And you have to act faster than your competition. So I'll share some of that to you today. The thing we built was a thing called SMOX. It stands for Smart Mobile Cross Marketing Effectiveness. I just find if you put an X in the name that people remember it, so that's why it's SMOX. And in some regards, you would think it should be obvious, right? I mean, you all raise your hands. It's a top three agenda. I didn't ask you the usual follow-on question was, how many of you aren't really acting against that? So the MMA's job is to help markers succeed. This is part of what we feel like we're up against. Uh, Valerie, if you could play that, uh, play that ad. Mom, I think it's time I got my own cell phone. Phones are expensive. Uh, wouldn't you rather get a tattoo? Dad, I think it's time I got my own cell phone. I think it's time you got a job. Dad, could I have my own cell phone? Worried your kids will run up a huge wireless bill? What? I can't, no, I can't hear you! So what? <laughs> right. 
<laughs> How many of you have teenagers in the household or at least close proximity to teenagers? Yeah. How many of you think mobile is really important? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have twin 15-year-old girls. That's meant to get sympathy from the audience. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That was nice. That was good. We got it. Oh, okay. Uh, hmm, that, that's weird. Oh, oh no, I remember how this slide works. <laughs> I built it. Um, sorry, I thought that was a mistake. So listen, but let's talk a little about mobile video, though. So I've set up mobile. Let's talk about mobile video. Here's what we know, right? Mobile video advertising, though, is incredibly effective. Probably 4X. Where's Adam from ABC? 4X TV, Adam. 4X. Listen, maybe it's going to move around with more studies or so on, but it's incredibly effective. And I'll explain fundamentally why, and you will likely agree with me. Second of all, it's priced at least, this is the title, right? It's priced at least 50% of its effectiveness, and maybe more. We're being extremely conservative of that. There was one data point that suggests that mobile video might be priced at only 10 or 20% of its value relative to the other options that marketers have. The markets have moved. Consumer behavior has shifted. You're now capturing new insights upon which you can act. And finally, you have to run it right. And there's a complexity of that, and I'll walk you through some of that. OK. Now, in some level, though, you'd have to believe that a channel that has this kind of consumer action, if you could go ahead and play that video, you'd have to believe that a medium, a channel, a, a device, or whatever you want to call it, a screen, I don't care, if it had this kind of impact on consumers, it's probably going to work for advertising, right? Because that's the grip that it has, right? Our eyes and attention are never off of that screen in whatever way. You all know the stats, right? Uh, you check your phone an average of 150 times a day. Yeah, the funny part is he never takes his eye off it, right? See? <laughs> Still, he looks. Nobody saw him. Just keep on going. But um, you know, we look at 150 times a day. 80% of you never leave home without it. 70 some odd percent of you use it in the bathroom. Not this audience. I'm sure other people, right? Those are the stats of what have become sort of mobile. And it was, oh, here, go back one more. Now, I'm just going to set up here quickly, and I'm going to summarize the research, and I want to jump right into the video stuff, but you need to have context. Here's what we figured out, and that's why this is such a big deal. The methodology that was used to do this is called experimental design. Do I have any research people in the room? Anybody? Experimental design, the gold standard of research. Yes? Yeah, thumbs up back there. It is. There is no better measurement of anything except for experimental design. It's what the drug companies do. And you know how it works, right? We split a group in half. We give you the drug. We give you not the drug. If you grow three eyes, we know the drug had an effect. And if you don't, then we know it was a drug. It wasn't something else in the atmosphere or something else that created that. We did the same thing for uh, uh, media. Gave you the ad, didn't give you the ad, because every other variable is constant because you're representative groups, we know exactly the effect that ad has. If this group said was 30% awareness, and this group saw the ad and had 40% awareness, then we know it's a 10 delta, 10 point delta, right? We know that for a fact. It's undeniable. It's no question. This is all real market. The only variability is that research, some people wonder if research really measures what it's out to do, but that's, a, that's an uber issue that doesn't concern us here. As long as you accept that research has insight, that's what we found. Now, what's interesting is we were able to do that for each and every channel. We can do that for TV, we can do that for radio, we can do that for magazines. We can isolate all the variables and then roll them up to a plan. That's fundamentally what had to happen here. It's so much better than marketing mix analytics, which is using regression analysis, which is the alternative approach. OK. Now, if I look at it in a very f just fundamental way, right? if I say I invested into the campaign average, TV, and, and there was TV, there was print, there was outdoor, there was uh, uh, internet, digital, there was, um, I'm trying to think if there's any other channels, and I think that gets, I don't think there was radio in anything that we did, I recall. And then I look at this group who just got exposed to mobile, what would be the change in your deltas? I can isolate those variables. I'm able to determine just that impact. And so across the studies, and this is a very summarized view, and you have seen some of the introduction to this research, which says that for every time you convert one person in the average of the campaign, all the other media, and then we show that same, we, we run that same scenario against this group which just saw mobile, we see mo mobile typically perform 2x to the average campaign. It's that effective and it's priced as such that it's that much more valuable.
And I'm talking about conversion here. I am now aware of the Moto X, as was for AT&T. Or in the case of um, uh, Gold Peak T, it was awareness of MasterCard was about trying to create an image of MasterCard used for um, travel. In the case of Walmart, it was the intent to shop. And then we actually even got it down to sales data such that we found out that it actually really produces sales and that there ultimately is an optimized level in the mix. And in fact, fundamentally what that optimized level was, you get up to there, that markers should generally be allocating around double digit, 10%, 15% of their budget to mobile, just at a very baseline level, okay? And the stats that all supported that, for any of you who have seen the research, was that MasterCard was 8% of their budget, Walmart was 9%, Coca-Cola, uh, which is Gold Peak T, is 10%, and then AT&T, they had a full 16% of the budget to be out at the mobile. And when the brands did that, remember I have perfect information here, right? Real world in market. When they do that, I know for a fact that the image rose by 7%, for Walmart sales went up 6%, for Gold Peak T sales went up 4%, and for AT&T the awareness for that particular campaign was up 12%. This is take it to the bank. This is works. There's no questions about any of this in its ability to create that change because again, I have a group who got exposed to the campaign without mobile and I had a group exposed to the campaign with mobile. So I know exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's jump forward though to mobile video because there's a whole bunch of stuff that works to change, that you can work to change the effectiveness of a mobile campaign. And we started to organize those into what we call broadly a mobile toolkit here, formats, channels, different targeting mechanisms, and creative. But fundamentally, we want to focus on video today. So here's what we found. First off, campaign for Gold Peak T. Very interesting. The same creative that ran in TV ran in mobile. So we've now removed the variability of that. Oh, this is display. Let me show you display first. Sorry, I got that backwards. First one, price for mobile video relative to display, about 3x. People tend to nod their heads. Its performance was a 650 index, about 6x. More than double the value of mobile display. Now, what's interesting about that, though, that's at low frequency, i.e. one, two, three ads in mobile video. The higher the frequency, the less likely that it works well. In fact, it almost performs just barely at par here. But this is where it gets fun, and this is for my friend Adam over at ABC. Mobile video, though, is priced on a CPM basis. Uh, you know, CPMs don't really measure anything, but they're a metric that at least common. Mobile video priced at about half the cost of TV. I've had some people feel that's a little low. You could adjust this. Its performance, though, at low frequency, is four and a half X. This would suggest that mobile video, at some cases, is worth eight X relative to TV on a pound per pound, price per pound basis. That's a big deal. But in some regards, we go back to our pool example. What would you expect from a channel that's like this? That I have it this close and this much paying attention. Now, I know some of the questions that some of you are probably having around this. Um, I'm not able to isolate tablet versus device. That usually comes up. I can't isolate iOS versus Android at this point. We're going to work to get there. But this is just looking at mobile video as served, same commercial. In this case, the same commercial too, although they use different, uh, they use different 15s and 30s was the only difference in this particular Walmart one. Now, what makes this really interesting, so first off, we have this glimmer that mobile video really works. But this is where it gets really interesting. This is the performance curve for mobile video relative to mobile display. And the impact that that has at each frequency level. That curve right there, that, that quick curve, is about two to three frequency. All the way out to the end gets to be about 15 frequency. Mobile video works, and it works immediately. And even more interesting when I compare it to cable TV itself. So all of you who sat around like I did, I'm an ex-media planning guy, media strategist. Those of you who sat around and said, oh, I have to run multiple ads in order to produce the effectiveness of a television commercial. Yeah, you had to do it. I don't know why. People aren't paying attention. I don't really know what's going on with TV. It's not a, not a big issue for me to try to figure that out, have to do more research, I guess. But I do know that mobile video works immediately 
and consumers convert and change their attitudes and their opinions, which is what this is focused on. I also know that they do the same thing when we do it for sales, because I have that data now. In fact, we just released the Walmart sales study, oh geez, about four, four weeks ago at this point. We also look to what's interesting, and I, I chose not to highlight some of this today. We also have done a study in China. This is from Coca-Cola China, and we see very similar results. Mobile video works at least in two major countries. I'll have UK very soon, and hopefully I'll have a study done in Brazil sometime into early, mid next year. But again, mobile video works. It works faster and harder than the others, and as I mentioned earlier, it's priced at quite a discount. Now also, what this sort of brings up too is that when you're planning video, mobile for example, let's just talk about mobile for a moment, I'll talk about the broader mix. What's interesting here is that in the original Coke campaign for Gold Peak, where they spent 5% of mobile, this was the mix they used. When we went though and actually looked at what was an optimized level of mix for them, it suggested that mobile video should be almost 50% of the total pie. It's that effective relative to display, and in this case relative to mobile audio, which also worked really well. In fact, the actual stats for this particular campaign is that mobile video should have been increased 2.5x and mobile audio should have been increased 2x. Now that's not to take away from mobile display. It works and it has a role in the mix and a mix is always better than a non-mix, right? You should all know that. That's the basics of physics and media, how it works. But this again suggests that very clearly mobile video works and it has a very strong role and likely should be a part of almost every campaign. And interesting too, we see very similar things too for the whole, uh, for the same thing in, uh, in Coke China. Oh, in this case though, it actually suggested that mobile video and mobile display should be about 50% of the mix and they should both be in this case three or four X what they were in the original budget, 15% of the total. And by the way, I don't have the slides in here. I didn't, oh actually, I actually do, do I have a point? Oh, I do have the point in here. So what's interesting about the Coke campaign that was done in China is that it actually increased the profit. Mobile was so powerful being added to the mix that it increased revenues and in essence profit such that that profit paid for the entire advertising campaign. Advertising was free. That's a big deal. Now I can't tell you if that would happen again. I can't tell you if that's typical. It was one study done in China, at least for the benefit of the US studies. I have four or five studies now and I'm starting to get pattern recognition, but this is a pretty big deal. And it certainly suggests very strongly that both the pricing is such there and the effectiveness of the channel is still the same as we see in the US. Okay, so to recap, what do we know about mobile video based on all this work and research we've done in the last couple of years? Well, first off, it works against the whole purchase funnel. I didn't really get into that, but it, if you kind of saw earlier the charts, if you kind of conceptualize that, it works from awareness all the way through down to sales. And in fact, as I, well, actually, I'll show you the Walmart data sales in a moment. We do that here when we optimize for it. It appears to be 4x four, four more effective than TV. Uh, it requires lower frequency, though, and this is a big deal. So you need to, you know, what do you do there, right? You need to either change out creative more frequently, you need to run multiple players, or the one that I like the most, well, actually, I'll, here, I'll do it in the fifth one here. I'll explain the one I like the most. And it deserves to be a part of every mobile media mix. If you're running mobile, you definitely want to run mobile too, mobile video also. And my favorite one, it's not gonna last. It will reset the market. Because I've just told you it's a deal of the century. So how many marketers and their media agencies are running back now, rethinking some of their plans to say, let's increase mobile. The more you increase that, unless the supply changes dramatically too, right, that increased demand is gonna raise pricing and this will begin to shift away. So the real opportunity right now, for those of you who are so bold, would be to buy video long term at today's pricing. That would be the deal to do. You would step in and buy five or 10 year contract against futures at today's pricing. I assure you it will be worthwhile. I assure you. And I saw the same thing happen in the internet when we did this kind of research and more. Okay. So, let me try to sort of wrap things up here. You know, I already mentioned there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes in a toolkit. In fact, let me kind of blow through some of this here. A lot of elements. I'm gonna, don't, don't run the commercial. Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, 
what happens when we actually then apply these learnings to overall campaigns, what we do is we see an increase in the performance of oh, the increase of the optimization of those campaigns. When we get mobile video right, when we get the mix right, when we do mobile in its most effective way, we see huge gains, not 10 to 15 percent as a goal, but 15 to 20 percent, which broadly suggests that mobile comes somewhere between around a 225 to 250 billion dollar business. And when we do that, we also see that the gains by the actual performance is not just 7% gain for MasterCard, but 17%. The Walmart sales we know went to 15%. Gold Peak went up to 7%. And we went up to 18% total in total gains against awareness. Again, big opportunities. So listen, we don't get to do this research without the help of a lot of people. I got one more thing for you, which is we're going to go do more research. We haven't told anybody else that. It's been a little secret. The board agreed just a few weeks ago to go ahead and do this. We're doing a wave two of these studies. We have some certain sectors. So if you are a marketer in one of these sectors and you're interested to find out more about how Smox works and maybe participate in it, let me know. We'd love to talk to you. If you're a seller on the other side and you're looking for a series of insights, as it says to the right, and you'd like to be a partner and help us to help the marketers do more of these studies, then I really encourage you to reach out to us and participate. And with that, thank you very much.